Welcome to Ahsoka episode 4, the one where they forget the lore. Seriously, it takes them 30 seconds before they forget what happens in the previous episode. We start with them in the ship and they're running repairs. Sabine's trying to contact the fleet for backup, but the comms are down, along with the power. Yes, that would be the same power that was working at the end of the previous episode where they landed the ship perfectly safely and had to turn it off physically. I will try to cannibalize some wiring from the secondary motivator. And they're gonna do that by getting the droid to fiddle underneath a chair. Always run communications and power through the chair of the co-pilot, that's just common sense. In fact, if anything, it would explain why the droid was the only person to get fried during the attack. Yet the entire ship's power routed through his arse. Arms are still down and the primary power converter is offline. How? It wasn't at the end of the last episode and you've done nothing but sit there and sleep? Has Ahsoka been taking a lightsaber to it or something? We can't send a distress signal and our ship isn't going anywhere. How can it not be going anywhere? It landed perfectly fine! I know if you leave your car parked and don't drive it anywhere for a while, the battery goes flat and it won't move. I would have expected spaceships to be a bit more more high tech though, to be honest. I'm just gonna take the power converter out for a run, doesn't really have the same ring to it though. Yang said their ground base isn't far. Yep, that's a plan. We've crashed in a forest, our ship's kaput. We have no power and can't go anywhere. Let's just frontally assault their entire base. There is a fine line between bravery and stupidity, but we are way past that now. Yang said their ground base isn't far. Start there. Let's just the two of us take on four force users and a load of troops. I'm sure it'll be fine. Ahsoka always coming in with the best plans. Luckily, it's like she's read the script and she knew half of them would just leave the planet before she arrived. I fear we face a difficult choice. If we can't make the journey to find Ezra, then no one should. No one should ever go on a journey to find Ezra Miller. AKA the Bengal ghouls. Just stay away from him, it's safer. No matter where he is, you're probably just best off if he stays over there. And yet apparently between those two, that's a very different meaning. It won't come to that. Won't come to what? They're talking like they can destroy a hyperspace lane. You worked out these lanes by following the whales. It doesn't really matter if you blow up some stones on a planet. Push comes to shove, follow the whales, you'll be fine. And yet apparently no, to travel between galaxies you need this stone circle to work. That's what works out the maths equation, even though it already knows the maths equation because they already worked out the pathway, which is why it's there in the first place. It's still got to work it out to send it to you, and that takes a long time. If that didn't make any sense to you, I agree. He'd be stranded out there. So you're saying there's an upside? Maybe this time for good. Better that. Based economy. Never thought I'd agree with the Soka, but if we're trapping Ezra Miller in a different galaxy, I'm all for it. And allowing Thrawn's return as heir to the Empire. Oh, yeah, there is that as well. I thought you were just on about the Ezra bit. Let's find that ground base. Didn't even complain. You can't like Ezra that much. If we can't fight the Sith, we're gonna strand Ezra in a different galaxy. Better find that base then. <laughs> at least try and argue for him if you're gonna pretend that you care. Can I count on you? Well, she's failed at literally everything she's tried so far in this series, so what do you think, love? But the droid comes out to repair the ship, and Ahsoka leaves him with a warning. Be careful out here. Have you sent something in the Force and you know it's coming, but you haven't told him yet? We're just on an enemy-occupied planet, walking around like it's Hollyoaks. Not a care in the world. So the droid starts repairs on the power that was working last episode, but isn't working this episode because somebody sat on it or something. And we zoom out. Oh, now it's a droid's arm! We're all dead! That's a teleporting droid, by the way. He sees them over by the ship, he contacts Stonehenge, and then they come back to the same place instantaneously. It's pretty incredible. We received word. They've located the Jedi starship. I've received word a second ago and it's already here. So he sends the guards for Ahsoka. The witch says they won't delay them long and so he sends his apprentice instead, along with Marok. Don't know why she looks so pleased with herself. Best get underway soon. Is that a note of fear in your voice? Experience. What, your experience has made you afraid? It seems like you're agreeing with her, mate, to be honest. But back at the ship and David Tennant is messing with a panel. Doesn't look like he's doing a very good job from that angle. But the soldiers arrive. Sabine and Ahsoka are getting ready for war in the armor, loading the weapons, that kind of stuff. And there's like a minute wasted on this, presumably because they needed to draw out time. She's reloading her guns, but can't find the ammunition. So she's like looking all over for it in the different guns. We literally see her look all over the table for it. Oh no, maybe it's in the bag. And she's searching in this bag forever. <laughs> it goes on so long we have to cut to Ahsoka just so the audience don't get bored enough and leave. She's still searching in the pissing bag. It's not even a big bag. You've got like four things in it, love. And it only gets worse. Oh, look, it's right there where you looked before two seconds ago. Relax. Why is she stressed out? She's a Mandalorian going to war. This should be a happy place. But Ahsoka starts essentially taunting her over Ezra Miller. I don't know why. I know how much Ezra means to you. Yeah, I mean, we start nice enough. You think that going Ezra means a lot to you, we're definitely going to try and save him. We are. Oh no, not with Ahsoka. Sometimes we have to do what's right 
regardless of our personal feelings. I guess if you want to be neutral, you've got to engage the dark side every now and again. Congratulations, Ahsoka. You didn't want to be a Jedi, so now you're just murdering your best friend's friends. Anakin would have been proud. <laughs> I guess the apple really doesn't fall far from the tree. But at that moment, the droid gets into a fight. <laughs> just after he's fixed the energy, unfortunately. You know, that power that was working perfectly fine at the end of the last episode. We've just spent the first five minutes of this episode fixing something that we broke deliberately for it, just so we could have a plot arc. But then Tennant gets suspicious. I think I heard something in the woods. Is something moving in the woods? So he starts scanning around. He's even like squinting his eyes as he's looking around. Why are you trying to make him a human? He's a robot. I'm sure he could scan with his eyes open. But then he gets jumped. Don't ask me how this guy snuck up on him through a forest. <laughs> And so we get a droid fight. And yes, I was hoping Tennant won, even though he's on Ahsoka's side, which is definitely a negative. But they exchange a few more blows, and it's like any kind of Marvel superhero show. It's just man in suit punches man in suit. Help! 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 Tennant starts screaming for help, so he covers his mouth. Did we really put a droid speaker in its mouth? I suppose it makes sense. I just assumed he'd be able to broadcast across radio or something, not just out of a speaker on his mouth. But you see all the other soldiers moving in, and although Tennant frees himself, it does backfire when the guy punches the energy conduit. Which knocks the power out on the ship again, even though it shouldn't have been out in the first place. That daft droid made it worse. He wouldn't. Well, she's sure of herself. I know it's David Tennant, but I can't say I share your confidence. But it does mean they go out and join the fight. Sabine decides to join the fight in a particularly bizarre way. Look, I'm on the stairs. I can walk down them or jump down them or shoot people from the stairs. I've got ranged blasters. It's fine. Instead, instead we get a bit of gymnastics. <laughs> What do you think this is? Dark Souls, love. But she shoots the droid fighting Tenant in the back of the head and Ahsoka takes on everybody else. I'm fine, she's deflecting the blaster bolts. I don't know why it all seems so slow. So, like, oh, I'm just gonna move like this and everything's gonna be fu- There's no kind of sense of urgency to her fighting. It's like she's out for a Saturday stroll with some lightsabers. But this guy pins down Sabine when he starts just shooting her armor. So all she can do is hold her arms up in front of herself to guard it. And then Ahsoka comes up with the strangest plan ever. She grabs this guy with the force, moves him in front of the guy shooting, who then shoots him in the back and saves Ahsoka. And I'm like, why didn't you just grab the guy that was shooting with the force? Smash him into a tree or something. Just force push him over. She could shoot him in the arse. Instead, Ahsoka came up with a plan where the only person that died is not the one that was dangerous. So when she force pushes him out, he could just start firing again. But he doesn't. And so Sabine beats him to the punch by attacking him with string. Why this disables him? I don't know. Because if you watch it, she fires it at him. <laughs> Why did you throw your gun away, mate? You could have just shot her with it. There are no string! Ah! <laughs> Stop throwing your gun away, you need it. That will set me back a bit. Some like great British understatement there from Tennant. But they tell him to continue fixing the transmitter and they leave to go to the Stonehenge. He's like, oh, you've got to stay together. You do better together. It's like, what do you think they're going to do? There's two of them. Do you think they're going to get into a fight and then just randomly separate for absolutely no reasons whatsoever, just so they can lose? That'd be really stupid. They're not going to do that. Especially after a droid has told them that they shouldn't separate. Especially after they say this. You always did better that way. We... Better get moving. Yeah, after that, they're definitely not going to separate in five minutes. That'd be stupid writing. Just obviously contradicting what we've already agreed to and set up. Together. Together, where we never separate. Very good. You'll thank me! Only if they actually take your advice. Because if they start thinking they know better, they're gonna split up and fail. They better not do that. Over to a massive farce, and we've got the General, who's disobeying orders. General! I don't think she cares, mate. You probably should have demoted her first. I'm not just gonna sit around and do nothing with her. Yes, you are. Those were your orders, love. But you can't leave without authorization. He's got you there. If you try and leave without authorization, the ship will just blow you out of the air and you won't get anywhere. Watch me. I'll watch you explode into a million tiny atoms in outer space. There's a meeting of the general staff. What do I tell them? You'll think of something. Or tell them that she just left because she was disobeying orders so they can blast her out of the sky. Something. something. What? That guy's never thought of anything in his life and you can tell. This is a guy who's even put a target on himself because he knows he's about to die at any second. Might as well give him a spot to aim for with the lightsaber so he survives. Although nowadays that's basically anywhere on your body. So the general just gets in her ship and flies off from the fleet because they're just going to let you do that, apparently. You must have authorization to leave, but you can just fly out and leave whenever you want. I, I don't think it makes sense. 
Mom, how come I have to do what I'm told you? She's also taking her child with her into battle. I'm not sure that's the sign of a good parent. For instance, there's a difference between a samurai fighting and a samurai fighting with a baby strapped to his chest. The second one, stop it. Yeah, here we are. Well, when you're a general, you can disobey orders too. And... That's not what that means, love. Generals obey orders, that's why they became generals in the first place. If you were disobeying orders, you wouldn't have become a general. If you leave without authorization, they're even more likely to shoot you down because you know more of their secrets. So they definitely can't have you going rogue, but no, they just fly out of the ship without anyone even trying to stop them, and off into space. Surrounded by the entire fleet, not a single person asks, where are you going? So then she gets a squadron of fighters that start joining her. You're like, oh yeah, they're definitely gonna stop it. No, they're, no, they're definitely joining her. She never messaged them. It never set them up. They just kind of appeared when she decided to disobey orders and leave the ship. Thanks for joining the party, Carson. Wouldn't miss it, General. How did you know about it, Carson? You know, you're risking an awful lot by doing this. So are you, Carson. At the moment, you're in front of the fleet going MIA. You're lucky a capital ship doesn't blow you out of the sky. Once a rebel, always a rebel. I'm a rebel. I'm going to disobey it. Fine, fine. You're demoted to private. Goodbye. You're never going to be in charge of anything. You're useless. So the TV show acts like this is some kind of major moment in history, judging by the music. It's just not that big a deal. She's getting in a ship and flying it off. Would have been a big deal if she'd gone back to her bosses and convinced them that they were allowed to do it. Just leaving anyway, with no guards stopping you, no fight, and just walking out the front door isn't impressive. It's like, oh yeah, thank God she's gone. I was waiting for her to leave. But we go back to Stonehenge. Essentially, they need these rocks to calculate the hyperspace coordinates that come from the big massive ball. This is what it's about, yes! The golden balls! Seems like nonsense to me when she could just twist a few things on it and it just appeared. Whereas they need a massive stone computer in order to work it out. Is it, are you, like, are you telling me that that is more powerful than the computer in your ship? Your calculations are off by even a little. We will be lost to the depths of the void. Do you think she doesn't know that, mate? That's a bit stating the obvious. If we don't travel to the galaxy, we won't be in the galaxy. <laughs> yes, mate, thank you for that. Have faith. Faith. I lost that a long time ago. Along with your balls. Start the ball machine! Look, you're the one trusting her to work out the maths. Does that seem like a clever idea to you? Calls herself a witch, hangs around ancient temples, and gets captured by the Jedi. But give her interstellar hyperspace calculations, and she is a wizard. So she starts playing with his ball in order to get the coordinates. And somehow, don't ask me how, Witchcraft. Now, mate, you're just stating the obvious. You've already called it that before. You use the force and you have the nerve to call other people witches. I mean, if anything, this is just technology. Unlike the force, you're more magic than she is. Calculating hyperspace coordinates. Yeah, but who is? Is your ship calculating the coordinates or is Stonehenge? I, I'd really want to know. And how have you managed to link up your ship to a stone? So I get something that I think is supposed to be dramatic and it isn't. And it goes on for a really long time. They're just running across a forest really slowly. You're not even running quickly. And then they run straight into the two force users. Did you literally just take the straightest path, which you know they already know? Have a little detour. Go round them, love. I don't know if that was meant to be intimidating, but if it was going to work, you needed to be taller than four foot three. <laughs> So Ahsoka looks over at Sabine as if, okay, we'll split in between us, you know, because at the start they were told splitting up was such a good idea. I remember Tennant saying, don't work together, just split up at the first opportunity. It'll be great, love. So they're obeying his orders. As Sabine decides to draw her blasters and start fighting a Jedi with them. Now she is a really bizarre shot. As she pulled both blasters and shot in the same place. She didn't even need to move a lightsaber for two different blaster shots. Shoot one high, one low, she can't block them. I don't know about teaching an old dog new tricks, she hasn't got any. Either way, what happens next is absolutely absurd. If you've got a melee weapon and they've got a ranged weapon, what do you think the two people should do? Because in this, the one with the melee weapon runs off. <laughs> And the one with the ranged weapon chases her. If you've got blasters and someone's running away from it, just let them. You're like, it's easy for you. They can't fire back. They've got a lightsaber. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was meant to be impressive. <gasps> from, it's, oh, come on, dude. You're not scaring anyone. You're wearing a mask. <laughs> to be fair, Ahsoka was slightly more impressive. Slightly. But then they circle around each other and it takes forever. Like seriously, can you just start stabbing people in the chest, please? It's far more interesting, and we all know they're going to survive anyway. But they have your fairly typical saber duel. It's pretty decent. 
there are some odd moments, like when he tries to do a spinny kick, for right? absolutely no reason whatsoever. You've got a two-ended lightsaber, mate. Instead of using your leg, use one of them. <laughs> the melee user is still running away from the blaster bolts. Gotta say, looks like this one's gonna hit her. Oh no, she deflected it because apparently she shot it over her right shoulder. <laughs> Still running away? Why are we chasing her? I could understand if she was running somewhere that you wanted to go. Or why you wanted to defend. You can't fight somebody in melee range if you run away from them. And now we've messed up because she's run behind a tree which allowed her to get into melee range. And now Sabine is in trouble because she wanted to be at range but she kept chasing after her until she closed the distance. Just stay at range, you can shoot them at range, so it's what they're for. And then she gets force pushed into a tree, which means she's only got one choice left. Apparently to fall on her ass. I forgot about that bit. There we go. She's got her lightsaber out, but she's absolutely useless at it, as we've seen throughout the entire series. Back at Stonehenge, and the witch decides she doesn't need to defend the map anymore. No, she's going to go to outer space where it's safe and leave him to defend it so he can die. All I'm saying is if the map was that important to you, you'd stay as well to defend it. Especially as you know there's only two people coming, so you'd want to outnumber them. Basic strategy, love. We have a nice visual indicator of how long it takes for the coordinates to come up, as the, just these circles actually fill with yellow. Somebody on the ship actually planned for this very countdown and came up with a graphic for it, but here we are. Back at the Ahsoka fight now, and it's about to get stupid. As I've said before, the lightsaber battles in this, as long as you don't freeze frame it and go through everything, they're kind of okay, as long as you don't pay too much attention. If you start paying attention, it will ruin them for you. But what happens next? It's just a farce. <laughs> There's no defending this. So he's holding it out and doing the spinny trick. You should just take it the pit. I can't take that seriously. How am I supposed to take that seriously? What is that even meant to do? It even severely limits how you fight because you can't even hold it like that because it cut your own head off. So it makes it very easy to avoid. As you know, he can't tilt it past a certain angle. And so this happens. He just goes to attack her, moves sideways with it because that's basically the only thing he can do. And she just does one slash across his chest, and it's all over, folks. Turns out that Ahsoka's lightsaber actually is deadly. The apprentice that stabs Sabine should probably upgrade to Ahsoka's one, as that actually does damage. Like, lethal damage. At least I'm assuming it's lethal, who knows? He might get put in a back to tank and just come back in two episodes. Anything's possible in Ahsoka. <laughs> Oh, it's so intense when we're staring into each other's eyes. You can see almost mirror images of this scene all over the internet on independent movies. Two women staring into each other's eyes as they hold a couple of lightsabers. <laughs> but then, Marek's death is um, a little bit theatrical. Like he got his first acting role in a play and decided, I'm going to milk this for every ounce of drama I can achieve. <laughs> Is he meant to be possessed or something? The only time I've seen someone die like that is on Supernatural. He's like, oh no, Marok's dead. I, d I don't know, was that meant to be a boyfriend or something? It never set that up, but I didn't even know she cared about him. I thought he was just another bloke, like another apprentice. And yet she immediately backs up as if she's scared to death. Get the map! What are you, just an idiot? David Tennant told you, don't split up. At this point, you deserve a lightsaber again. David Tennant knows best. Got this. She definitely doesn't have this. But the apprentice decides that she's gonna stay and continue the fight with Sabine. You will regret this decision. I mean, she'd have to survive to be able to regret it. You basically just said you're gonna lose. <laughs> you're gonna defeat me and then regret it. I don't know how else that happens. You're not gonna die and regret it. But we're now at four squares out of nine towards completion. Why they couldn't have rounded it up to ten? Don't ask me, Star Wars. I will prepare for our departure. Don't you think you should stay here and defend the place, love? There's, there's Jedi coming. You're supposed to be a powerful magic witch. I think you'd be a bit useful. Protect the map until I send for you. Why aren't you protecting the map? If it was that important, do it yourself. Instead, she left her incompetent underling to do it for her. But then Ahsoka arrives just as the witch leaves, which implies that she knew she was coming and left first. And he says this. Anakin spoke highly of you. Don't think I would have done. She must have changed since he met her. <laughs> or at least during the live adaptation. Interesting. He never mentioned you. Oh, that's supposed to be a sick burn. Luckily, we don't live our lives based on whether Anakin has mentioned us to his Padawan that left. Not really high up on my priorities, to be honest. Everyone in the Order knew Anakin Skywalker. Few would live to see what he became. Far more lived than should have done, though, shouldn't it? You know, Order 66 only killed 66 people. It's like, a few survived. Although more will appear next week in the next series <laughs> when we need some more characters. I'm not here. Well, you're definitely here. I can pissing see you, love. I thought the Force was supposed to give you extra senses. She can't even detect herself. To discuss my past. 
Oh, okay. Probably speak a little faster, keep the first half and the second half of the sentence together. <laughs> I'm not here. To defeat my enemies. Uh, <laughs> to discuss my past is the line I was looking for. The only reason I'm here is to secure the future. Oh, I thought it was because you were getting paid a lot of money. That is what you're all striking for after all. For you. Something far greater. Ambitious. Wait, wait, are we just talking past each other? I'm here to discuss my future. For you, something greater. Ambitious. Striving for something bigger than yourself is now ambitious, is it? Most people just say it's the reason to survive. Necessary. Why are we replying to each other in one word at a time? Ambitious. Necessary. Bigger. <laughs> it's like it's written by three-year-olds. You find starting another war necessary. I'm not starting a war. Y yes, you are. You're bringing Thrawn back from another galaxy to start a war. You even said that's what he's going to do. But Thrawn will. What? Oh, you're the one bringing Thrawn back. He's nice and happy in a different galaxy and you're travelling there to bring him back to start a war. You're responsible for his actions because you brought him from the other galaxy into this one. This is like that Tom Cruise movie where he said, you killed a guy. He's like, no, I didn't. I didn't kill him. The bullets in the fall killed him. I didn't start a war. Thrawn did. I just brought Thrawn here and told him to. One must destroy in order to create. Okay, you first. How about we destroy you and create a better galaxy out of it? Why have we all got to destroy everything except the person that wants to destroy everything? Didn't have any reply, love. Ran out of script in time, just thought you'd leave some empty space of staring at each other. What were you two thinking when you were just stood there, staring at each other for half an hour at a time? You go any slower, you're gonna start moving in reverse. How inevitable. Of course it was inevitable. You're defending something she wants with her lightsaber. What? What? <laughs> you both thinking you're intimidating. Oh, I've got a light. Yeah, they burnt, they know. They're not afraid of them. Ahsoka's turned into an old age pensioner that can move at the pace of a snail. He's not even moving, he's just like, what are you doing? Can you, can you like, like, attack me or something? This is, this is really, oh, we're going the other way now? This is really boring. <laughs> we're just standing here, staring at each other. Forever. Oh, look at me, I've killed the air behind me. Please, please do something. I'm, I'm like watching you, waiting for you to start doing a movie. Oh, oh no, I'm gonna change stance. Oh no, I'm gonna change stance. Oh, oh no, I'm, I'm gonna, oh no, I think I'll have it over it. It's only a 30 minute episode. You wouldn't think you could fit filler in it. But they eventually attack and they've got different styles. She's a lot more light and fast and he's just heavy and he's just smashing away a lightsaber at all times. Anytime she has defenses, he breaks them. There is also a lot more staring in the mid- like, you can't even see them on the screen because they're that far apart just staring at each other. But as you can see, any time they get into a duel, he just immediately destroys her block. Which is important, because there comes a point where she's blocking in front of her face, and he doesn't just do what he did there. He will be able to have killed her, and he decides, nope, nope, not gonna bother. Actually, I think I'll be a bit little bit lazy on this one, thank you. Now I think this is one of the better battles, simply because he's got a different fighting style than the rest of them. Whenever Ahsoka fights, it seems really slow, but when he fights, yes, it's slower, but it also comes across with like a greater sense of force and power. Whereas she's like doing little tiny hits, but doing them really slowly. So with him, it comes across as strong and with her, it's like she can barely move. Over on the ship now, and she doesn't seem to care that he's in a fight. They just tick over halfway in the time it takes to calculate it. We saw how long it took to get to four. It was a long time. So I don't know why this happens. How long until we receive the final coordinates? Moments. No, it isn't. It's a pissing long time, love. If I said moments to you, you'd be like, what, like three seconds, five seconds, seven probably at maximum. This goes on for like 10 minutes. There's also, as ever, the obligatory, why didn't you just hit her moments? Because she runs up to this pillar, jumps off it, smashes his lightsaber, and then decides to just turn around. Someone tells you to back, hit him. Hit her. Look, he's defending. Why? All he has to do is swing and he wins. Like I say, the lightsaber fights, they're fine if you just watch them all the way through and don't really concentrate. Just don't pay too much attention to them. If anything, it ruins it. 
She also did another spin there where she would have died if he just attacked. Why is he not swinging his lightsaber at her back? I mean, we really need to stop doing this for no reason whatsoever. Bang! He's, she's dead. But he goes to force grab a rock and fling it at her. And then Ahsoka decides to go on a different tactic. She starts trying to get to the ball. Things get a lot more fancy when she's got an objective in mind rather than just, I'm going to beat you. Seems she realized she can't beat him. I don't know what that was. He went to hit her and then just left his lightsaber there. <laughs> she could have swung around the other way. Never mind. But eventually, he just decides, I'm stronger than you. What are you going to do about it? So just yeets her against a wall. <laughs> Mate, if it was that easy, I don't know why you didn't do it before. Oh, look, it's so artistic because as they're fighting with a lightsaber, we see the helmet, the removed helmet of the Mandalorian. And that symbolizes the life of the Mandalorian she's left behind and the Jedi future that she's building to next to Ahsoka. The meta narrative. It's so artistic. This is definitely art. That's why we can't say anything and have to stare at each other for three minutes at a time. Just so the audience, the very, very thick audience, has an actual ability to fully take in the sheer emotional artistic talent which has been on display. That's why I hate scenes like this, because it feels like the director is rubbing his arse on my face. I just want to watch lightsaber fights and you're like, oh, look at this helmet, it's so artistic. So we find out that the Mandalorians aren't really good fighters. That was all a lie, actually. It was a lie that went on for centuries. They just get battered by everybody. <laughs> I mean, all I'm saying is, doesn't they actually look like somebody bred for war? <laughs> and then immediately after getting punched in the face, she goes to swing. Just loses her lightsaber, I'm still not sure how, unless she cut her hand off. Has to start blocking the lightsaber with her armor. And at this point she's lost, except, da da da, she can magically use the force. You know, that thing that she hasn't been able to use and actually doesn't have any affinity for and so isn't able to access. Yeah, she can do it now, because she needs it to or something. Literally has no ability to access the force, has been repeatedly stated throughout the series, and now she's like, I can use it! Truly is a miracle. You have no power. Yeah, but the big question is, where did she get it from? Because she didn't have it last week. Is the force contagious or something? I mean, it's the only explanation at the moment. Did she steal some of yours? <laughs> yes, she disarms her by closing her hand and firing a blaster out of her wrist. Gotta be honest, as a force user. And I think she would have seen that coming. But he goes to attack Ahsoka. And she decides just to stick a leg up on a wall. I, I don't know why. That leg won't actually help you. <laughs> You want to know what happens in this scenario? He sweeps your other leg out and you go flying on the floor. This isn't a strong position. This is a vulnerable position. Now remember every other time he's always been able to break her block? He's just far stronger than her, so whenever they do it, he just immediately pushes or starts hammering a block down. And then now, the moment her lightsaber is over her own face, he doesn't just go, Oh, I'm stronger than you. I mean, really, if he shut his gob rather than deciding to waffle about how victorious he was going to be, he would have just killed it. Your legacy, like your masters, is one of death. Well, why isn't yours? You're supposed to be the evil guy that kills people. You're like, oh, I'm not just going to push this on you. I don't know where this came from. <laughs> Did she hit a level up again and just get extra powers? Your legacy- oh, I'm so weak! Your legacy is one of death. I'm powerful! <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. You can't have somebody changing power levels and strength levels mid-fight. You established that he is stronger than her and she can't break his block. And yet... That's exactly what she did. She beat him by sheer brute force, pushing him back. Never happened before in the entire history of the fight. Could she beat him on strength and now... Now she can kick him 20 feet in the air over that way. So then she goes and grabs his golden ball. And there is one golden ball which is particularly beautiful. Which actually turns out to be a very hot ball. And that's the one that contains seven... But literally burning her hand. I'm sure that's not going to come back in the story later on. <laughs> she only dropped it on the ground. It rolled about 20 feet. Back to Sabine now. Yeah. The two-foot terrier lobs a smoke bomb at her because for some reason she now realizes she can't defeat Sabine. I, d I don't know. There is a problem though when she lobs a second smoke bomb. In fact, two more smoke bombs. And you're like, well, okay, it's a 50-50 chance. You might as well pick one of them. <laughs> You've only got to run beyond the smoke and then you'll be able to see her anyway. Like, you all know she's going to the ship and you all know where the ship is, so I'm not even sure what the point is. Work out which one the ship's behind and go that way. Sabine would rather just stand around though and give up, you know. It's what the Mandalorians are renowned for. Laziness and cowardice. <laughs>
So she starts whining because the calculation was interrupted, even though it wouldn't have been if she'd bothered to stay there and defend it in the first place, rather than standing on a bridge. Quite frankly, love, I don't know what you've got to complain about. Yeah. That! Yeah, you probably shouldn't have grabbed a steaming hot metal golden ball, love. Because now, he's got to teach her a lesson. Was on wife. <laughs> For some reason, damaging her hand, which she doesn't even use to hold the lightsaber, has meant that she can no longer fight very well. So he's just annihilating her, knocking her back, until eventually she's just pushed up against the cliff. At that moment, she sees the two-foot terrier come back into town. Get them back! Sweet. So Ahsoka thinks that must mean Sabine is dead. At this point, you've only got yourself to blame. You were told by David Tennant not to split up, and it was the first thing you did. But then Ahsoka tries to get revenge on Sabine by using the Force to attack her. Worked pretty well. You would have thought she would have had defenses for that kind of thing, but apparently, no. He's like, no one attacks my little apprentice, that's my pet, and gets ready to kill Ahsoka in her own show, with four or five episodes left of the series. What do you think the odds are that she's going to die? This is why you need more than one character, so that people can die in it. Once again, we get into a brute strength lock, something he's proved he can defeat her on every single time, except this one. I think it did. You were defending a golden ball, she wanted a golden ball. What else was gonna happen? Well, you know no other way. You don't know another way. What other way was she gonna have to get the golden ball? The only other way that was possibly existed was just, join me in darkness. That's not really an option, love. But then Sabine shows up. Sweet. Destroy it! Yeah, I wouldn't destroy it like that though. If I want to destroy this mouse and I'm going to shoot it, yes, I will destroy the mouse. And then it's gonna go through and shoot in the back of the hand. She's gonna blow her own hand off. At least hold it on the sides and shoot through it. Doesn't have the scent she was born with. Step away from her! She doesn't particularly seem very confident that she's going to destroy the golden orb though. <laughs> Why? Let's just watch that again, shall we? He has the perfect opportunity to kill her. He could have actually attacked her. Instead, he hit her lightsaber to knock her off balance and push her off a cliff. He'd already got in under her defenses of her lightsaber. He could have done the same move and then thrust and she would have been dead. Assuming that his lightsaber has the lethality mod, because we know what thrusts are like in this universe. So Ahsoka falls off a cliff and presumably dies. I live in hope. And then we get round two with Sabine and him. I don't know what hope she thinks she has of defeating him if Ahsoka couldn't beat him. I mean, talk about precognitive when he's blocking blaster, blaster bolts. He moves his lightsaber here and she hasn't even fired yet. Oh look there, it defended one. <laughs> Can you like fire a bit faster? I'm like blocking your next shot before you've even done it. So when she threatens to blow up the golden orb again, uh, he basically calls her bluff. Like Ahsoka is already dead and you want to get Ezra back and for Ezra, I need that ball. You have no reason to destroy it now because it was Ahsoka that wanted rid of it, not you. You should do as your master says. It's still a particularly stupid line for the villain to say, you should actually just defeat me and my evil plan, that's what you should do. You're like, all right then, bang. There is no reason she hasn't destroyed it at this point. Destroy it. She would have done it. Stay back! Stop telling him to stay back. If you're not gonna just shoot it, then he's got nothing to be worried about, does he? But you're not like her though, are you? More than you know. What does that mean? She gonna have a haircut too? I mean, so far your only personality trait is being an arsehole and having short hair. And so he makes her an offer. Essentially, you give me the golden ball, we're gonna travel to the galaxy, and I'll take you with me, not hurt you, and you can go and find Ezra Miller. Why she wants to, I don't know, but this has been her entire storyline from the start. So she literally just lets him walk up to her and, like, gives it to him. Your master takes one fall off a cliff, and you immediately betray her and join the dark side. Come with me. Join me in the power of the dark side. <laughs> it's one of those speeches where you're like, this would never work. Well, it, apparently it does. If you find somebody as thick as Sabine. I give you my word. Because his word is worth so much, you know, he is a man of his oaths. He's a good, truthful, honest bloke. He's a good character who just wants to wipe out half the galaxy. That's how you can trust his loyalty. You will be reunited with your friend in death. That's what, that's what the character should be. Instead, we've got a farce. So he just puts out his hand and she's like, oh no, I don't want to give it to you. I'm playing hard to get. And then she just puts it in his hand anyway. 
So what was the point of going, oh, no, I'm not sure? It's all because this. And that means we've got to be very pretentious about everything. Drag everything out. Make it all feel like it's far more important than it actually is. Deeper than it actually is. That way, if you don't like it, you just didn't understand it, you see. You'd, it's, too, it's too deep for you. If you were an artist, then you'd like Ahsoka. You'd be able to appreciate the deep intricacies of its meta-narrative. It's the only way. Do you know the way? I just like, come on. I think I'm losing my mind again. You, you've reached that point where you're just like, I need entertainment. And he's just going, give me the ball. Like, where well, you shouldn't give him the ball. Just shoot it, love. Call yourself a Mandalorian. Fuck, this is a stupid scene. Do it. Do it. Do it. It's like, come on. But Ezra. Don't do anything for Ezra. He's not going to do anything for you. Except maybe choke slam you to the floor. All I'd suggest is that Sabine doesn't go to a B&Q. <laughs> Like, we're just sitting there with her going, oh, I don't know, for like half an hour. It's so, oh. Like, can you imagine her going to a supermarket? Oh, there's 15 different flavors of yogurt I can't choose. She just stands there in front of them, staring at them, and no one else can get to anything. I've met many people like you, Sabine. At that very moment, Ahsoka should have just appeared behind her and beheaded her. That's all that needed to happen. It's just like, you have betrayed me. You have betrayed your master. And she just cuts her face off. It's like a horror film. She just appears out of nowhere. It's like, you get what you deserve. Although it is exactly the same kind of degenerate, disgusting, repulsive behavior that I've come to expect from Sabine. So, you know, at least she's been consistent as a character throughout the entire series. She's always been an evil, useless cow. So this dude just gets his smug face on, gets his seriously smug face on, and, and why not? He's just had an apprentice see her master get murdered by him, and then he's like, join me, and she did. You would have thought that watching him kill Ahsoka would have been enough. It's like, no, no, that's definitely gonna make her want to be my friend. <laughs> so then we get Sabine's speciality. Like, why are we just having heavy breathing from Sabine in every episode? It's like it was written into her contract or something. But she's recovering from the fight until the apprentice gets back up. You get what you deserve. Release her. Although he did have to spoil the fun. He's like, I gave my word, I don't break my word. I'm like, well, you are on the evil side, so I still don't believe you. Sure. Doggo. Put it down. That's the way he talks to her, like she's his pet. But with that, he reinitiates the calculation with the golden ball. Lord Balin has remedied the situation. Calculations are complete. I mean, that was fast. When they stopped the calculations, there were still three squares left. He puts it back on, it's completed immediately. It's almost like it was an arbitrary countdown for extra drama that meant nothing. And the whole moments was just, whenever we feel like it. Maybe the calculations were linked to the fight and whoever won decided whether the calculations were going to happen or not. Maybe Stonehenge is actually linked to the myth of the universe. Oh no, probably it was bad writing actually. It was probably, it was probably bad writing and they didn't have a reason or any logical throughputs with it. But at that moment, the general and a tiny fleet arrives. She manages to radio down to David Tennant, I don't know how, his comms were broken, remember? He tells her about the intergalactic ship. Do not let it escape. I mean, I'd love to know what she's gonna do about it. You would have thought that this ship would have massive guns on it that could destroy anything. Although we did find out in the previous episode it can barely destroy one ship and she's got seven, so... I guess it fits with the current law? So they come up with a plan. Let's cut across the axis and block its path. Great, there's a ship. We know it wants to get out of here, so we're going to go in front of it, block its path, so it can't fly away. Incredible plan. I hope they actually do it. So they fly off to intercept and Balin goes back up to the ship. After destroying the map with his lightsaber, it turns out the golden ball is weaker than Sabine. A lot weaker than Sabine. So the big ship brings their drives online. Mark S4 is in attack position. You have to say that, it's Star Wars, it's the law. They say they're not launching fighters. I don't think they're sticking around for a fight. Great, so we know their plan then. They're not launching fighters because they're not sticking around for a fight, which means they're going to try and fly away, which is why we're moving in front of them to block them so they can't fly away. This is an incredible plan so far, as long as everybody remembers what's happening. <laughs> because if they forget, that would be a really, really bad time. So there they are, they fly straight in front of it in order to block its path. Both of them return along with Sabine in handcuffs. He said, I won't hurt you. He never said, you won't be one of my prisoners. She turns around, doesn't even have any expression on her face for the fact that they brought Sabine back with them. No one even mentions it. Not even a little, what's she doing here then? Now at that moment, they detect the Republic craft. They even say, they're in our flight path. They are obstructing our path. So you definitely can't fly away then. You're gonna have to stand and fight. I'd probably launch fighters. 
because you can't fly away anymore. Ignore them. Engage the hyperdrive. You can't, they're blocking your path. He even said, they're obstructing your path. They took that position because it obstructed your path. And yet we just start launching hyperdrive, even though they're right in front of us. We get a nice view of the warp core. Looks like they've done a mix of Doctor Who and Star Trek. <laughs> That's a tremendous surge in power. Yeah, it's almost like they're powering up their engines. Now, you know what I hope he didn't do? I hope that in your, we're gonna block your flight path, you didn't all circle up into a nice little group that fit directly through the center of the ship, because that'd make you absolutely ridiculous. What you needed to be was like ring shaped, like they are to make sure that if they got into hyperspace, you hit them. It's the hyperdrive. They're gonna jump. You knew they were going to jump. This entire scene is about them going to jump. You even got in front of them because you're like, oh no, we think they're going to jump. That's why they're not sending out fighters. And then the moment you arrive there, you're like, hang on, hang on. I might need a second opinion, but I think they're gonna jump. So they jump while the other ships are in their way. And apparently they all did decide to group up inside the ring. And so essentially their vessel just went over them. I mean, maybe I'm a fool, but if I wanted to block a ship's path, I wouldn't make sure that I was in the middle of it where there's no ship. Go in front of something important like the engine so that if they try and fly, you'll go into the engine and destroy them as well. Don't do this. I mean, honestly, you just get what you deserve for being in a circle in the middle of a circle. <laughs> I don't know what you were expecting, but you, you're getting something better. It's just a shame Ahsoka wasn't with you, to be honest. But the general manages to recover because she's in the bigger ship, so, so she put all the useless people in the, the more dangerous ones. Mom, I, I've got a bad feeling. That'll be that packet of Haribo you had for lunch. I told you not to eat all of it in one go. So David Tennant's now completed his repairs, but there's nobody left for them to go with. So he's basically stranded on the planet now. Lady Tano? Sabine, are you there? I mean, if I couldn't get through to Ahsoka, I'd be glad that I couldn't get through to Sabine. If anything, you'd wait for her to contact you. Don't want to spend any more time around her than you have to. But then, just when you think it's all over, we go back to Stonehenge, over the cliff where Ahsoka fell out into the depths of the water when we find it lying down all nice and calm dry and alive but then it turns out she's on some kind of energy platform and i can only think this is what's left after disney after they sell off all the profitable parts it's just a big massive dank void with the odd glimmer of hope that's one of the remaining ips they haven't destroyed yet but then she hears a voice master is that you anakin i didn't expect to see you so soon does that mean you're dead? Are you in the force forever? But with that, she turns around, sees a shadow. Anakin. Yeah, oh, Anakin! And he's like, yes, it's me. A waxwork of Anakin. <laughs> I don't know what they did to him, but his face looks awful. What do they do? Get that de-aging filter and just turn it to maximum and then double it. <laughs> just keep applying filters. That's how they work. He's trying to smile, but he can't from all the Botox. He's just got like a paralyzed face. Now, what can I say about that? I think that'll probably be an episode that a lot of people like, because it had Anakin in it and a load of lightsaber battles. And Sabine turned evil, which is basically how, to me, she's been the entire series. But there's still loads of it that didn't make any sense. We're going to blockade this ship so it can't fly out of here. And then they just fly in the middle of it. So it goes around them. And then they're surprised when it's trying to fly away from them, even though they knew it was going to. You've got Sabine just giving him the map. It didn't make any sense whatsoever. She's willing to sacrifice a galaxy for Ezra Miller. I mean, who cares? And even the lightsaber fights, if you ignore like the technical aspects of it, there were still parts where they built him up to just be able to break any block right up until it'd be one where it would actually be useful and then suddenly he couldn't and she was just infinitely stronger than him all of a sudden for no reason it's like no if you're going to set up a power balance between two people she can't magically become three times stronger all of a sudden like she's leveled up i would have preferred they'd done something where she outwitted him rather than just brute forced him when we already know that she's not stronger than him and then with the rest of it you're like Actually, not much got done in half an hour. Because it was mostly fights, we didn't really achieve anything. It's taken about three episodes to go from, then it was, they want to leave and go to the next galaxy, and now it's, they've gone to the next galaxy. So in three episodes, we really haven't moved very far in the story at all. And you could try and mask that with all the lightsaber battles and everything else you want. You can throw an Anakin in, I don't care. And I think this probably was the strongest episode, simply because there was far less talking. And it's when they talk, 
they show how stupid they are, as we also proved this episode. But as to the rest of it, I expect it to be way further on in the story than we are now, only just leaving. And I think all of that could be improved drastically if we just stopped everyone staring at each other for half an hour at a time because we think we're so artistic. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.